Whether you deny that global warming is man-made or what percentage of it is man-made, we cannot ignore the fact that the global surface sea temperatures have exploded since the early 1980s, and this is causing enormous problems. The world desperately needs to move away from burning fossil fuels at the fastest rate in human history and to use renewables. However, many people believe, including Bill Gates, that nuclear is the true answer. But is this actually correct? Does this stack up logically? Here in Australia, we have crocodiles, kangaroos, and deadly poisonous snakes. There are so many things here that can kill you that um, you're lucky if you reach the age of five. I jest. But all that aside, we're actually one of the countries leading when it comes to solar. This year, the entire country ran on almost 74% renewables at one point during the day. We have some states here running almost entirely on solar. But our politicians can't agree. Our current political leader believes renewables are important and they're investing in them. Our government has supported the investment of hundreds and hundreds of millions on some of the biggest batteries and solar farms anywhere in the world. But here's the thing. The other side of politics, the, the Liberal government, which could come into power at some point soon, believe that renewables are not a good idea and we should not invest in them and that they're a bit of a scam. They believe that nuclear is the only way for Australia to truly decarbonize and that we should begin installing nuclear power plants all across the country and just decommission solar. Is that actually a good idea? Well, Renew Economy, who I often talk about on the channel, weighed in on this issue. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Just want to say a big thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you can support us on Patreon, that would be amazing. I'll put a link in the description below. Ruben Finnegan from RenewEconomy.com.au says that in Australia's race to net zero emissions, nuclear power has surged back into the news. Opposition leader in the government, Peter Dutton, argues that nuclear is the only feasible and proven technology for cutting emissions. Now, I should point out that we do have a state here, the biggest city in the world, that runs on pretty much only renewables most of the time now. And they're saying that within 24 months, it will run on renewables 100% of the time. So obviously, Peter Dutton is completely ignoring what's going on in much of the country. Energy Minister Chris Bowen insists Mr. Dutton is promoting the most expensive form of energy. And even if you are a fan of nuclear, which I totally respect, that's fine if you believe that nuclear is the best option, you have to admit it's certainly not cheap. In fact, it's very expensive. And the truth is, nuclear projects, nuclear power plants always run over time. I have done the research here, guys. I've never found a nuclear power plant ever made within the time frame it was promised or within the cost that it was promised for. Anyway, is nuclear a real good choice um, that makes sense? Or is our current government right that promoting nuclear power is about as sensible as chasing unicorns? Now, you all know what I think on this. For someone who has not kept up with developments in nuclear energy, its prospects may seem to hinge on safety. Yet by any hard-nosed accounting, in other words, by just simply using basic mathematics, the risks from modern nuclear plants are orders of magnitude lower than those of fossil fuels. Deep failures in design and operational incompetence caused the Chernobyl disaster. Nobody died at Three Mile Island or from Fukushima. Meanwhile, a Harvard-led study found that more than one in six deaths globally, or nine million a year, are attributable to polluted air from fossil fuels. Two more mundane factors help to explain why nuclear power has halved as a share of global electricity production over the past 30 years. Time and money. Renew Economy says that rights law is relevant here. There are four arguments against investment in nuclear power, and those are this. 
Hockey Luto 3, Flamenville 3, and Hinkley Point C plus Vogel. Now, I did not pronounce those correctly, so my apologies. These are the four major latest generation plants completed or near completion in Finland, the United States, the United Kingdom, and France, respectively. Those are nuclear power plants that are about to go live. Cost overruns at these recent plants average over 300%, with more increases to come. The cost of Vogel, for example, soared from US $14 billion to $34 billion. Flamenville went from 3.3 billion euros to 19 billion. 3.3 became 19 billion euros, by the way. So that's about 36 billion Australian dollars. What about Hinkley Point C? Well, Hinkley Point C went from 16 billion to 70 billion euros. 70 billion euros. That's including subsidies. Completion of Vogel has been delayed by seven years, Oculuto by 14 years, and Flamenville by 12 years. Nuclear proponents very rarely look at that kind of information. It's more like, it sounds good, what they're promising is great, but unfortunately, actual delivery of the projects themselves always costs an insane amount more and takes much, much longer than was originally promised. A fifth case is Virgil C. It's in the US. Nine billion was spent before cost overruns led the project to be abandoned. So it was a nine billion dollar, nothing, complete waste of money. All three firms building these five plants, Westinghouse, EDF, and Reva, went bankrupt or were nationalized. In other words, they all went bankrupt. Consumers, companies, and taxpayers will bear the costs for decades. By contrast, average cost overruns for solar and wind are around zero, the lowest of all energy infrastructure. Now that data, guys, is coming from Renew, Renew Economy. These guys are the experts when it comes to renewables. They have all the data. I present a lot of the data that they talk about on their channel, but the truth is I present a very small fraction of what they talk about. So in other words, They've done the research here. Wright's law states, the more a technology is produced, the more its costs decline. Wind and especially solar power and lithium ion batteries have all experienced exponential, astonishing cost declines over the past two decades, in excess of 90%. For nuclear power though, Wright's law has been inverted. The more capacity installed, the more the costs have increased. Why is that? The 2020 MIT study done on this issue found that safety improvements accounted for around 30% of nuclear cost increases, but the lion's share was due to persistent flaws in management, design, and supply chains. There really isn't enough of these being built. That's part of the problem. In Australia, such costs and delays ensure, or would ensure, theoretically, that we miss our emissions reduction targets that we want to hit in 2029 which is now less than six years away. It would also mean spiraling electricity costs as a grid waiter for generation capacity that didn't come. For fossil fuel firms and their political friends, this is the real attraction of nuclear. Another decade or two of sales at inflated prices. It is genuinely true, guys, that grids that use larger renewables provide cheaper energy to the people that are using those grids. So how does the cost of nuclear compare with renewables? Nuclear advocates will tell you we have no choice because wind and solar power are intermittent power sources and the cost of making them reliable is simply too high. Well, that isn't actually true. Let's compare the cost of reliably delivering a megawatt hour of electricity to the grid from nuclear versus wind and solar. Renewable economy goes on to say that according to both the CSIRO and respected energy market analyst Lazard Limited, Nuclear power has a cost of $220 to $350 per megawatt hour produced. Now that's Australian dollars, so you can calculate the difference there, but that's approximately $150 to around $200 US dollars per megawatt hour. Without subsidiaries or state finance, the four plants cited previously generally hit or exceed the high end of this range. So probably around $200 US dollars per megawatt hour for those plants. 
Australia is already building wind and solar plants at under $45 and $35 per megawatt hour, respectively. And that's Australian dollars. So the, the difference here, guys, is around $200 US dollars versus $30 US dollars. That's a staggering gap. Clearly, solar and wind are much, much, much cheaper than nuclear. Like I said, by an order of magnitude. The CSIRO has modeled the cost of renewable energy that is firmed, meaning made reliable, mainly via batteries and other storage technologies. It found the necessary transmission lines and storage at only $25 to $34 per megawatt hour. That's Australian dollars. So once again, you're earning about $20 US dollars per megawatt hour, meaning $50 US dollars versus $200. That's with everything in place to make renewables comparable to nuclear. In short, a reliable megawatt hour from renewables costs around a fifth of one from a nuclear plant. We could build a renewable grid large enough to meet demand twice over and still pay less than half the cost of nuclear. However, people believe the future of nuclear is very different to what it is today. The future of nuclear, they say, is small modular reactors. And Bill Gates himself is one of the biggest proponents of these small modular reactors of anyone in the world. In fact, he believes in them so much that instead of investing in Tesla, he's invested hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into nuclear, in particular into small modular reactors. Proponents of nuclear power pin their hopes on these reactors, which replace huge gigawatt scale units with small units that offer the possibility of being produced at scale. That might allow nuclear to finally harness Wright's law. But is it too late? Do renewables already have too much of an advantage? Commercial SMRs are years away from deployment. In other words, these commercial small nuclear generators are many years away from actually being built commercially. The US firm NewScale, scheduled to build two plants in Idaho by 2030, has not yet broken ground, and on paper its costs have ballooned to around $190 per megawatt hour, meaning it's nearly as expensive as the big nuclear reactors we've just spoken about. SMRs, or small nuclear reactors, are decades away from broad deployment. If early examples work well, theoretically, which they could, in the 2030s, there will be a round of early SMRs in the US and European countries that have existing nuclear skills and supply chains. If that goes well, we may see a serious rollout from the round 2040 onwards. However, if you look at the cost declines of wind, solar and batteries, I believe the lead is just too far. And how is this relevant? Well, take this year. This year, the cost of lithium ion phosphate battery energy storage has come down by over 30%. Solar panel prices have come down by approximately 35%. We're seeing not every year the prices come down for renewables, but almost every single year. By 2040, that cost of 50 versus $200 could be 25 versus 200. So in these same decades, solar, wind, and battery storage will continue declining in price because of Wright's law and its cost curve. Last year, the government in Australia was spruiking the goal of getting solar below $15 per megawatt hour by 2030. $15 per megawatt hour. Imagine where it will be in 2040. What that means is that small nuclear generators have to achieve incredible cost reductions to compete cost reductions that just seem extremely unlikely. Finally, while small nuclear reactors may be necessary and competitive in countries with poor renewable energy resources, it's worth remembering that 90% of the world lives on the sun belt, where plenty of sun is generated. Australia has the richest combined solar and wind resources in the world, so clearly Nuclear is just not a good option for us. Could it be for you, in your country, wherever you are? Well, that really depends. But for the world's population, for the majority of it, they don't make sense. Now, today, Australia actually has a ban on nuclear power. Should Australia actually lift that ban? Would that make sense? I mean, 
Is that something we should take back? Should we actually cancel that and consider investing in nuclear like some of those in our government say we should be? Now, I personally think that would be crazy. And Renew Economy says it would actually be tragic. With our unmatched solar and wind resources, we have the chance to deliver among the cheapest electricity in the developed world. If we want to get to net zero as quickly as possible, doing it as low a price as possible, then clearly renewable energy is the answer. But what are your opinions on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.